Okay, in this video, we are going to solve for the step response of an RL circuit instead of an RC circuit, which we covered in a previous video. So, we're going to have a very similar setup, a circuit with a switch that closes at time t equals zero, a battery with voltage source Vs, a resistor R in series with an inductor with inductance L, and the output voltage of the circuit is measured here. But this time we are going to solve for the current in this circuit as a function of time instead of the voltage. And the process we are gonna follow is pretty much exactly the same as we did for the RC circuit. And you can imagine that there are other possible combinations here. So I could switch things, switch things around and have the capacitor first and then a resistor. Same thing for inductor, whoops. Inductor first, then resistor. I could ask you to solve for the output voltage or the current in either of these cases. And I could ask what happens if the input, instead of going from low to high, goes from a high voltage down to zero volts. So there are, I'm not gonna count the permutations there, but however many different combinations of the circuit and the input and the parameter you're being asked to solve for, but the process you're gonna follow for solving for the step response of these first order circuits is generally gonna be the same. So even if, say, you're trying to do this for a homework problem or something and you were given a different circuit, you can follow the same process I'm going to go through in this video. So again, you are being asked to find an equation for I of T. And I'm going to suggest that you start out just by writing down all the equations that you know. So we went over this in a previous video. We know that if we have, oh, sorry, my tablet never likes it when I write too close to the top. If we have a first order differential equation of the form tau dx dt plus x of t equals some constant times a for forcing function f of t, then for a step function, where that forcing function is just a constant, then the solution to that equation is gonna be x of t equals x of zero, the initial condition, minus x of infinity, the final or steady state condition, times e to the negative t over tau, plus x of infinity, or the final condition. And again, we are just kind of Taking that leap of faith here, this is not a differential equations course. If you've taken differential equations separately, then maybe you've figured that out, but that is kind of lost to the ages for me. So we are just taking that for granted in these videos. This is a circuits course, not a differential equations course. We also have Ohm's law. So talking about the equations we know for the individual circuit elements, for the resistor, we have Ohm's law. So V sub R, the voltage over the resistor is equal to IR, and for the inductor, we have V sub L, the voltage over the inductor, is equal to L di dt. And when analyzing a circuit like this, we can also use Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. So in this case, we know the two elements are in series, so the current through them has to be the same. So IR equals IL. And since they are in series, their voltages are going to add, that's Kirchhoff's voltage law. So I should have written here, this is applying KCL. And if we apply KVL, we know those two voltages, VR plus VL, the voltage over the inductor, have to equal the voltage of the battery once the switch is closed. And finally, remember right now, we are just writing down everything we know we have some rules for an inductor covered in the earlier video in this playlist where we introduced inductors. We know that current must be continuous over an inductor. You cannot have discrete jumps in current. And in steady state, an inductor behaves like a short circuit which is another way of saying the voltage drop over the inductor equals zero. Okay, so, so far we have just written down everything we know. And remember our goal is to find the current in the circuit as a function of time. So what do we need to do to find that? 
And we're at the end of the day, we want this equation, but instead of x, we're gonna have i for current in there. Okay, so to have this equation, we need both the initial condition for the current, the final or steady state condition for the current, and we need tau, the time constant. So that's three different constants we need in this equation to get i as a function of time. So we can find the initial condition and the final condition by analyzing the circuit using our rules for an inductor. And we can find tau if we can get this differential equation. So let's do that first and figure out how we can get a differential equation of this form that is going to give us tau. And we're going to do that and getting a differential equation of this form by analyzing the circuit using KCL and KVL. And this is where this process might vary a bit depending on the exact equations that you have for the elements in your circuit. So in this case, if I look at KVL, VR plus VL equals VS, I can already see how that sort of looks like the format of my equation here where I have two terms added to each other equals some other term. And if I look at the voltage for my inductor, I can see that this has a derivative in it. So that's kind of what I'm after in this equation, some constant times a derivative. And the voltage for my resistor also has some function of the current. So ultimately I want a differential equation that only has current in it. I don't want any voltages in it. So what I'm going to do is plug both the voltage, plug the formulas for both the voltage of my inductor and the voltage of my resistor into this KCL formula. And if I do that, I'm gonna get IR plus L DI DT equals VS. So I'm going to rearrange the terms to get them in the same order I have up here. L DI DT and I'm gonna move the R out in front of the I since it's the constant, even though that's not usually how you would write it, plus R times I equals Vs. And I'm almost there. You see the form of this equation looks almost like the form of my first order differential equation here with just one problem. This one does not have a constant in front of the X term here. The only constant is in front of the derivative of X. So I can get the equation in this form where there's no multiplier on x, or again, in this case, it's i, that's my variable in this equation, by dividing this whole equation by r or multiplying it by one over r to cancel out this r term. So that's gonna give me L over r times di dt plus i of t equals Vs over R. And interestingly, that is gonna give me the time constant for an RL circuit, which is equal to L over R. So you'll remember if you watch the capacitor video, the time constant for the capacitor circuit, the RC circuit was tau equals RC, where in that case, increasing either the resistance or the capacitance would both increase the time constant for the circuit here, if we increase the resistance, it's actually going to decrease the time constant for the circuit. So different behavior with the same layout with the resistor first, but we've swapped the inductor in for a capacitor, and this is the resulting time constant that we get. Okay, so we have one of the things we need in this equation. We have the time constant. We still need the initial and final condition. So for the initial condition, we're gonna try and figure out what the current is immediately when the switch closes and that is where we can apply our continuity rule for an inductor. So we know that before the switch closes, when the switch is open, there can't be any current in the circuit. So the initial current before the switch closes has to be zero. And then applying continuity, current through an inductor must be continuous. So we know that the instant that switch closes, the current through the inductor is still going to be zero. So we have I of zero equals zero. And then for the final or steady state condition, we're going to imply our steady state rule for an inductor that says in steady state, an inductor acts like a short circuit. So it's like it's just a wire, like the inductor isn't there after the switch has been closed for a long time. So in that case, we just have a circuit with a 
single battery and a resistor, which is one of the very first things you'll ever see in a circuit analysis class. So we know in that case, we have Ohm's law, voltage equals current times resistance. If we rearrange that to solve for the current, we're gonna have I of infinity equals Vs over R with the usual apology to my high school calculus teacher that that should be written as a limit, not as I of infinity, but I'm being lazy about it. So there we go. We have our initial condition and our final condition and our time constant. We can go ahead and plug all of those into this equation to get I as a function of time. So we have I of T equals I of zero, I'll write it all out before I plug things in with I's instead of X's minus I of infinity E to the negative T over tau plus I of infinity. Now we're gonna plug our values in. I of T equals zero minus BS over R E to the negative T over tau plus Vs over R. And I'm gonna try and write out a bunch of the algebra steps because I am bad at doing algebra in my head at my old age. So that is going to be equal to negative Vs over R E to the negative T over tau. This is just rewriting this without that zero and getting rid of the parentheses. Plus Vs over R. We can factor out the Vs over R. So that is equal to Vs over R times one minus, sorry, factor out and reverse these two terms so it becomes one minus instead of having a negative first, E to the negative T over tau, where tau equals L over R. So there is our equation as we originally asked for for the current as a function of time. And if we were to graph that, just like we did for the RC circuit with I on the Y axis and time on the X axis, we would see that it's going to start out at our initial condition of I equals zero and asymptotically approach our final condition of Vs over R with that characteristic first order response curve where at one time constant tau, it's going to be 63.2% of the way to the final value. So this time constant rule applies, again, in this case to current instead of voltage or whatever the behavior, we talked in a previous video about how this can also happen to mechanical or thermal systems. This type of differential equation is not unique to electrical systems. And again, we apply the exact same process to solve a different circuit that had a resistor and an inductor instead of a resistor and a capacitor. In future videos, we will talk about RLC circuits. So what happens when you have both a resistor, a capacitor, and an inductor in a circuit, and what happens when you drive the circuit with a sine wave instead of a square wave. But again, those are all gonna be topics for another video.